Lucas! I got you. Damn it, Bill. What just happened? One of Bill's stupid traps. There. That fridge, it looks like that's a counterweight. Okay. The story really dictates sort of the arc of the overall pacing. Storytelling would always want to be subtle. They would always want to keep the, the world grounded in reality. But gameplay has requirements where the player needs to see this thing. The player needs to immediately know that the enemy is attacking, that this room is dangerous, that this room is a puzzle that you have to solve. What are the things that we can do on the joystick to make you feel the same way that these characters are gonna feel when we get to this next pinch point in the story. There's a turn in a scene that we need these characters to take and we need you to feel it or understand that and that means you have to play it. Don't that. Sam! Oh, thank God. Why are you running? Oh, ah! Doorway, over there. Run! We really want to make sure that there's that contrast between the negative space and then the high tension spikes. A lot of times we won't play music or we'll play very minimal music just to let you know kind of the state whether you're still in stealth or combat has broken out. Hearing someone's footsteps or hearing a person breathing on the other side of the door has so much tension to it. Shh, shh, quiet. Make you feel the tension of the world, make you question whether you want to engage with these guys or kind of try to stealth around them. That's another reason why we don't have traditional cover in the game. You smoothly move around everything, contextualizing with the environment, but you're never locked down. We want the player to, with that crafting system, with the scavenging system, with all of the abilities available to them, to constantly be moving around and changing as the moment arises. Gameplay is all about, I have a limited set of tools, and how am I going to use those tools and those limitations to overcome this obstacle in front of me? And that obstacle might be infected, might be another class of humans that wants to kill me for a bottle of alcohol in my shoes. It's important for us that we don't underplay the violence because then the threat doesn't seem as real. We see video games as this incredible uh, medium to tell stories. We want to treat it as uh, equals to books or comics or TV or movies. This is subject matter that would not be considered out of the ordinary to tell in one of those other forms of entertainment. Fucking hunters. See, this could have been us. We wanted you to buy just the desperation of these people and why they're behaving this way because it's so brutal. And at the same time, we didn't want to make it so over the top, stylizing it so then it doesn't become as real. It was important for us actually to hit that middle ground where it's kind of disturbing. That glint that's happening on that curvature, it'd be good if there was a way that we can guarantee that from this angle, we're seeing it. Seeing but it really it's flat. overall too bright and opaque. Yeah, it looks like paint. Yeah, see the blood on the ground works really well. It's something about the, the other shader is messed up in this environment. We gotta fix that to unify the look. Shouldn't make you giggle or laugh or any of that. You should be kind of appalled by what you have to do, but you understand why you're doing it. You want to feel each hit. You want to feel each concussive strike. Lives are at stake. We want a death animation to have impactful performance, not just have a guy keel over in a ragdoll. In real life, a guy hitting a guy takes a half a second, but in the game world, you want that to be as instantaneous as possible. I live my whole life in this very ugly test level. I basically just uh, fight dudes in here all the time. It, all, almost every move is divided between like an intro and a swing. And one of the many things I have to end up doing is like counting frames and being like, okay, on frame 18, I want you to get out of here. I want you to be able to start moving. Every hit reaction that an NPC plays um, 
they are not necessarily in the correct pose. When you strike them the next time, we just pop them with a zero frame animation change, which is usually kind of a no-no, you know what I mean? Normally you want characters to blend smoothly and realistically into animations. But what we found is that um, you can cover that pop up with a heavy impact. They can go from almost any pose into the pose that the impact starts from and your eye just covers up the transition for you. So if you throw a brick at a guy, it puts him in this like kind of st staggering stun state. And that changes the moves that you do when you come up and punch him. So now I'm gonna come up and punch him. And now when you're punching him, because you've hit him down, you get this like auto aim moment where you get like a free headshot. I try to make it so that, you know, if you kind of know what you're doing, that you can set yourself up for one plus two equals three. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Right here. Ah! Memory on a console is a, a very precious resource. All of Joel's animations with every weapon, all the NPC animations, the stealth kills, you know, all of that stuff happening need to fit within a four meg to five meg memory footprint. This is a list of everything that's loaded in game and how much memory it's taking because memory is our most precious resource right now. <laughs> So we have a level, uh, we call it the bookstore, it's in Hunter City, and this is a zone for example. So when I set an AI to this zone, he will never leave its boundaries. I want guys to guard this exit where you have to go through, so I'll zone a couple guys around there to make sure that they, you know, they can fight you and use all this cover, but they want to stay around this door. This is another key component of the AI, is what we call the nav mesh. This defines the overall play space of where an AI knows he can or cannot go. Hey look, that's where a cover used to be. <laughs> and there's a hole cut out for it, I gotta fix that. Here's some other wonderful things. See these little red polygons? Yeah, that means they're not linking right for some reason. So that means they can't really walk through here properly. It's a bug and I need to fix it. <laughs> Welcome to my life. If you look at a lot of games, NPCs are usually only alive for, you know, a few seconds before the player ends up shooting them and then they're dead. Uh, we want our guys to be much more dangerous and much more threatening, which means they have to be alive for longer, they need to uh, exist in the world for longer, which means you as the player can witness them acting out their uh, behaviors for longer. So we've been working uh, really hard on our AI systems. Back of the box, biggest bullet is gonna be like AI. So we tried a number of different prototypes with the buddies, uh, including having Ellie be super independent of you. She would try to flank the enemies, get behind them, or get between you and them. And a lot of times those decisions should surprise you, just like a real person, a real character would surprise you. And we discovered after many different prototypes, the best thing for her to do generally is to stay very near you. You need the exploration, you need the scavenging, you need something to say like, okay, if we just crank it to 11 the whole time, then it's, it's pinned up there and there's no time to breathe, no time to assess or analyze, and no, no time to really contrast. There's no way of shifting the pacing. <laughs> 